Testing, testing. Welcome. Welcome to Wickerson Studios. I am working over here, uh, complicating things more than I have to, pretty much. Um, but what I have here, you're going to see there's a little bit of geometries here, one of which is pretty cool. Um, we're running from playing with the frame act component. And you can do this in Grasshopper. It's not a tough model, but it's interesting to think about running a uh, GH hop server uh, and using the hops node to do it because here's another iteration of the same object um, after I pulled out what I needed. Now I'm going to show you why uh, hops uh, probably needs more development, and I'm excited about that. Let's take a look at this script. Now, now this file is quite large uh, in a sense of I'm putting in everything from the Rhino 3DM curve development API and we're running through almost everything. I'm only running into a couple of problems when I'm trying to output polylines um, and I'm trying to output enumerations or what is an enumeration, a curve orientation, sorry. And then this one was one that wanted to put out a uh, plane. So when you take a look at it and you write your script um, and you and you want to do something like this like frame at, it's going to want to turn out a plane but there is no output a uh, hops plane. I don't know why there isn't a hops plane, but there's a hops vector and there's hops points. So you have to build your frame by your output and then run this script, which is basically one line of script that will take um, a hops component and run it. So from that, I thought, well, let's just start with a curve, a circle, and that's exactly what I did, and then put it through a range so we could have many points. Um, and then I did a little bit of acrobatics to figure this out, and that's what's exciting. So basically the whole point is you can have a script that's huge, but as soon as you start turning out things in the hops outputs that they don't have wrapped in, and the certain things that they have wrapped in, I think I made note of it up here at the top. You can see that you have, at least I thought I indicated it at the top. Yeah, you basically have all of these hops um, containers to bring things out in. Uh, to output to, but you'll see there is no plane. There's vector point line curve. So what you have to do is, like I said, uh, get in here and uh, basically try and find out what builds that geometry. So it's always helpful to know the basics, and then I can output those things. So it's a roundabout way to do something very simple on a circle, uh, basically a horizontal planes or perpendicular planes. And then I start building my planes on there, and I give myself some twisting axes and I was thinking well let's play with something kind of Mobius like and so what's nice with those planes is then I'm back in the grasshopper manipulating those and turning them um, I'm putting an ellipse on there that I can stretch and pull the ellipse in different directions and then I can loft it even though this is a clumsy way to code uh, I can take it and I can treat it like a very hard manufactured lost loft system here so as I go through here you'll see that that basically builds it one section to the next and chooses how to loft it and outputs uh, that cool geometry that you saw over here which is more kind of like I said rolled steel manufactured like with little deformation and then what I additionally did was went and capped the ends uh, left one side open caps the ends took the faces found the center points to that and uh, yep. and uh, then I put a sphere on each side that I can control the uh, size of that and then boolean unit together and get that really nice solid form over here so same script uh, reliant on this wonderful uh, what I'm basically building is kind of an app that'll do everything vanilla and then some that 3dm geometry will do I doubt very much I'll do it for Rhino common that would be absolutely insane to put everything in but it's interesting to think about uh, what you put in here so as I go here and take a look at what geometries exist let's grab this one and you can see that you have some really nice finesse over what you choose but I can't as that domain goes I can move that start and finish it at different points you'll see it's loading over in the I can change this diameter uh, the only thing I shouldn't change is the number slider I can change the pi as the rotation and you see it kind of flips out if you know anything about kind of planes working with robotics obviously you're your entire machine would have to invert itself and then it will bug out. I can thicken and thin that ellipse in whatever direction I want. And the only thing I'm not playing with is this range steps because then my program would crash. So if I went in here and typed in a range step of seven and put it in, I'm pretty sure it's going to bug out on me and say no. Well, it would still go to the point of producing here. Actually, it doesn't bug out, which is pretty cool. 
um, it just defaults on the ones that aren't running and doesn't take that to the farther script. So that's pretty cool that that script actually still runs um, by changing the uh, steps throughout the range. So I didn't think that was going to happen. I thought I'd actually have it bug, but it doesn't. It works fine. So you can change that, and then you can have a lot of finesse over here. So it's a pretty nice script uh, using basic Grasshopper node, but once you get your Grasshopper skills down like this, it might be fun to play with an app that gets you thinking a little more uh, complete as to what Rhino uh, is really available for you. Now most of these scripts are so basic one-liners that just produce a boolean to say if it worked or not, but once you get those booleans working that you know there's success, you can continue farther on and start outputting beyond booleans. You could start trying to pull things out like points and like curves and like we just did here, points and vectors, which would then allow us to build uh, more complex geometries. It would be nice if there was a hops uh, plane. I imagine it'll be there in time because uh, uh, they're doing so well uh, over at McNeil's. So that's it. Uh, pretty fun stuff. Um, it it kind of stinks to get stuck behind a few types that you don't know how to output, but that's the same problem going the other way into kind of uh, uh, data science and seeing that you end up with arrays and series and data frames and you're like well how am I going to export that in so I can interact with that in Grasshopper so you can see the extremes of where I'm really playing and widening the uh, field of what I can do um, pretty cool script uh, if you take a look back here uh, this is pretty much everything and all I did was like I said took the few examples the 3DM geometry I wanted to get using because I went the other way, like I said, into pandas and, and numpy, and now I'm coming back into curves, and what can we do with curves? And I'm literally just casing, cutting and pasting the development notes from the entire curve uh, 3DM, uh, Rhino 3DM API. So after this, we're going to do, this will output a, a boolean and a float, which should be fine because I can handle that with a hops number and a hops boolean. This one's going to be the same. Uh, this one's going to output a curve, so I can handle that with hops curve, hops curve, hops nerve curve. I think I can handle with curves as well. And then uh, stay simple, and when you're done that, I'll probably go simpler than lines, go back to points and vectors and planes, and then uh, I'll go a little deeper in the surfaces. So you kind of get active with what you're doing in development, and then you push and pull it in each direction to what you want to do. Um, and in the end, you're allowed to make some pretty cool models that are reachable anywhere. Somebody's online and they can grab the whole uh, uh, app uh, application and get it up and running and start playing like the way I'm doing over here. I don't do a lot of this anymore because it's really kind of what uh, you can find tutorials for all over line. Um, but it does beat, uh, get you a little bit deeper in your head and you're playing this instrument in your own kind of way and having fun with it. So thanks very much for watching. Michael Wickerson at Wickerson Studios.